Thank you so much, um, Peter. Um, so welcome. I guess it's very early and as Peter said, it's a pretty chilly morning. So I'm joining in from London and it is, the weather's very interesting today, but welcome and thanks for joining us today. Um, so Friends of the Earth has been really hosting a lot of green job summits um, over the last month or so. And really it's to engage in the dialogue of a green economy and the green revolution that is necessarily needed for the future. So I hope that throughout this conversation and throughout this summit that we really go into the, the discussions about what is needed and whether or not we have the skill-based task force to throw us into that necessary future. So we're gonna be asking a lot of um, necessary questions around what is needed for the green economy. Um, as it's evident that if we're going to ever reach our climate targets, we need, you know, action now. Um, and we also need to consider how we have that action in a form that is a just transition, but as well as how we can change our educational system to embed sustainability into that. But in addition to that, how we upskill many people who have left school, who will be entering into this new um, green revolution. So I look forward to having great discussions today with loads of different people from different disciplines and really looking looking at how we can move forward when looking at a green revolution. So I myself, um, I'm the community campaign assistant at Friends of the Earth. Uh, my background is in student politics. So like uh, Stevie, I was a sabbatical officer at the University of Kent. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the discussion today. Um, how the day is going to basically run is we're going to have a session looking at our ambitions for the green jobs we're going to have a few pr presentations from our speakers and then we're going to go into some breakout rooms so just so everybody is aware that this will this is recorded so if you do not want to be seen on the recording then we suggest you do turn your cameras off um if if you are comfortable being seen on camera then definitely keep it on because we want this to be an engaging summit um and we will be also sharing this uh, recording after the event. So please remember to keep yourself on mute if you're not speaking um, and generally have a great time at the summit. So I'll be passing it now on to Peter. Brilliant. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, and yes, really nice to see you all. So we were really keen for this event to uh, to really bring a few people together and and look at this question of what do green jobs mean in Cornwall? Um, so I want to start us off um, with uh, a bit of a, a, an exercise on Mentimeter. So some of you might have used Mentimeter before. It's a way to uh, ask a few questions and, and see what kind of opinions we've got uh, in the room. So there's a, a couple of ways that, that you can do this. You can either do it on uh, on a phone, if you've got a phone to hand, or you can do it on a different screen in your uh, uh, in your laptop or computer, whatever you're calling from. So I put, the, um, I put the link in the chat there. So you can either click the link and do it on your, uh, on your computer, or you can, on your phone, you can go to menti.com and use that code 56214088. Uh, and what that will take you to is a few questions um, that we're going to go through uh, together. So I'm going to share my screen so that uh, you can see the answers as they come up. And some of you have already started ask, uh, answering this first question. What is the first job you think of when you hear the phrase green job? So don't think about it too much. Really just want to hear, okay, what immediately comes to mind when you think of that question? Uh, uh, don't be swayed by what you see on the screen. Really, you know, if, if, what you, if what you comes to mind is something completely different, we really want to hear that. Uh, there's, no, there's no wrong answers to this. Um, it'd be really interesting to see what comes up. So already we've got a few, uh, a few themes, renewables coming up, ecologist, uh, farming, the word sustainable, sustainability come up. Uh, quite a bit as well. Trees, uh, small scale farming, uh, more about renewables, solar panels. Uh, so some definite themes emerging here. Uh, we'll keep it running for uh, a couple of, uh, a few more seconds just to see uh, what comes out of that. Any more uh, people want to, to contribute? So definitely some themes I'm seeing around uh, renewable energy um, and also around uh, nature. Um, but there are also some things around uh, teachers. Teachers is a really interesting one. First, first thing to, to think of. And this idea of getting hands dirty. Um, please do. If anyone wants to explain why they put what they put in the chat, uh, it'd be, be really interesting to hear. Um, so we've, we've had a few, uh, a few answers to that. Um, and we'll move on now to the, to the next question. Um, or one more just came in there. Uh, okay, great to see. Thank you. That's really useful. Uh, I'm going to move us on to the next question. 
which is, how clear is the definition of green jobs to you? So when someone says green jobs, talks to you about green jobs, how clear is what that means? We've got a range of options here from very clear right down to very unclear and also an option for not sure if you, if you don't really know how that looks. Okay, so we're already seeing somewhat clear is the, uh, is, the, is the leading option here, somewhat unclear as well. So interesting that not that many people are, are not sure, but there's a, there's a real split between um, kind of clear and, and, and kind of unclear. Uh, so again, a couple more options coming in. So somewhat clear is, is starting to be the, uh, is the, the leading contender here. Um, and a few people somewhat unclear, some people very unclear. Importantly, no one is very clear about what green jobs is. Um, that's great. I mean, if anybody was, I would probably offer to hand the summit over to them and let them lead it and explain what that is, because I don't think uh, any of us feel like it's a, there's a very clear definition. But really important, I think, to recognise this is the starting point. This is where we're working from, that we don't have a very clear definition of what green jobs are. So next question is what makes a job a green job? So here you'll be invited to, to write a few more words if you if you want to uh, if you want to add a bit more detail here. But really interested. Okay, so when you're thinking about what makes a, a job green or not, how do we actually define that? So again, this is this is totally anonymous. Uh, so don't feel like you have to kind of get the right answer or anything like that. There is no right answer here. Uh, we, we're really interesting to, uh, to we're really interested in in using this event to kind of get to a clearer outcome of what this might be. So a few answers coming up already. It's got to contribute to sustainable outcomes. It has to have a positive impact on the natural environment, contributing to nature recovery, contributing to well-being of the environment, minimizing discussion, helping climate goals, sustainable, carbon conscious, appealing is an interesting one, a uh, job that is sustainable, positive impact, sustainable ethics, protecting the environment, less to no waste, so there's a, there's a really strong theory about it's, it's got to contribute to environmental outcomes and have a positive impact. An interesting one about uh, biodiversity, um, also in a sustainable industry, which uh, raises more questions about, well, what is a sustainable industry? How do we define that? Really interesting. Uh, here, a job that doesn't negatively affect the climate. So not necessarily explicitly positive, but one that doesn't affect negatively. Um, also, uh, what else have we got? Um, transparent with its environmental credentials. And I imagine that's going to be a theme that comes up today as well, that idea of transparency. Um, OK, so some really interesting ideas here. Um, someone's put that they're not sure. Um, how do we define positive environmental outcomes? Really good question. And again, something I'm sure we will uh, I'm sure we will come to uh, across the course of uh, across the course of the day. OK, I'm going to move us on there. My next uh, the next question is a series of questions. Um, I'm, what I'm going to uh, present to you is a an example job. And I want you to say whether or not you think that job counts as a green job. So first job is a sustainability officer for an oil company. Is this a green job? So we've got yes, no, not sure. Does a sustainability officer for an oil company count as a green job? OK, we've got a pretty even split so far. Um, yes and no. So six yes, seven no, three saying they're not sure. OK, more for yes, more for no. Uh, still coming in. OK, so no is starting to, to dip into the lead. Some people unsure. Again, in the chat, if you're not sure, um, or even if for yes or no, it would be interesting to hear um, uh, where, that, where that comes from. What's, what, what are some of the key questions? Uh, around this for you that are, are tilting to you towards yes, no, or not sure, but really interesting split there. Okay, um, right, next question. So another, another um, hypothetical job, and this one is a diesel delivery van driver for a solar panel company. So this is someone who works uh, for a, a solar panel company and drives a, a, a diesel delivery van uh, to get the solar panels around. So does that count as a green job? Okay, again, we're seeing a pretty even split between yes and no. Uh, fewer people not sure about that. I mean, obviously, there, there's a lot of uh, uh, unknowns in the, in, the, in the question. A few more people towards uh, uh, not sure. So slightly more towards yes this time, um, but there's some more no's, uh, no's coming in. Again, really interesting to hear 
why are people uh, coming down on, on whichever side they are? It's quite a different question to the um, to the previous one. But again, really interesting. There's no real consensus we can get from this, which is which is probably quite a good sign uh, that, that we are. We're, we're right in thinking we don't really have a clear definition of green jobs. Um, OK, so next question, a lithium miner. So a question that's very relevant down here in Cornwall. Is a lithium miner a green job? Straight away, we've got another another split. Okay, a few more coming in for uh, for yes. Still, definitely some for for no and some for not sure. Again, there is no, of course, right answer here, or certainly not not one that we're presenting. Um, it's just really interesting to see what people think. So, a lot more on the side of not sure here uh, than were before. So, it'd be interesting to hear, you know, what's what's driving that. Is it a more is it a more complex question? There's more variables. Um, or the fact that lithium is so important for um, uh, some of the pathways towards net zero that, that we're working towards. Okay, really interesting. Uh, okay, the last, uh, the last hypothetical job is a politician. Is a politician a green job? Um, so uh, this is the, the last one we want to, to ask you. Um, so, um, I thought we were going to have a, a, a sweep of yes there, but no, we've got a, we've got quite a few no's coming in as well. Also, still some not sure. Again, a really even split here uh, across yes, no, and not sure. Um, again, of course, lots of going to be lots of variables in here affecting how people answer it. And and again, you know, in the chat, please do share uh, uh, you know where you're coming from on this one. Um, really interesting to see uh, uh, how people are feeling. Uh, so. We haven't really reached a consensus on any of those, which is which is really interesting, and I think definitely shows the uh, uh, where we are, what we've got to do with with this idea. Okay, the last question I've got for you, um, and this is one that we'll we'll pick up again in the breakout rooms. What do you think are the main barriers to green jobs in Cornwall? So we acknowledge that green jobs are are things that are gonna are going to are, are already here, are going to keep coming. What are the barriers to those uh, existing in Cornwall? And we'll hear more about that from our from our speakers, uh, and we'll discuss this more in the breakout room. But it's really good to give us a bit of a, a kickstart on on hearing where people are with this. So again, some really interesting uh, examples coming up: uh, political will, investment, lack of opportunity for young people, education availability, uh, people not knowing where these things are, infrastructure, transport policies, strategy and vision, skills infrastructure coming up again, economic priorities, training. Okay, so again, so some really th key themes coming up here around the, the infrastructure that we have, uh, how we're prioritizing green jobs, uh, skills, training, education that people need. Um, really interesting to, to see this, and it'd be really good to, to pick, this, pick this apart uh, uh, as we get into the, the, the breakout rooms uh, and hear from, our, hear from our speakers. Okay, uh, interesting about yeah about courage, uh, political will, low awareness, lack of time and knowledge, legislation. Um, excellent. I'm, I'm sure we could we could keep running with this question uh, forever, uh, but I will uh, I'm gonna um, I will end us end it end it there, and I'll bring us back uh, to the main room. So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for, for for contributing to that. Uh, we'll we'll keep the um, the outcomes and, and the, the results of those uh, of those polls, and we'll share them afterwards as well as we'll share the um, uh, share the recording and, and any notes from the from the chat and the and the breakout rooms. But the other the other key thing that we're going to share afterwards uh, and kind of the key output for this event um, that I wanted to to talk about is. Um, as highlighted in, in what we've just been through uh, just there, we don't really have a definition for what green jobs mean. And we certainly don't have a definition for what green jobs mean in Cornwall. There's a lot of really good work going on already, and we're going to hear a little bit about that uh, throughout the day. Um, but what we're really hoping to come out of this event, uh, and the reason that we've we've put it on, is we wanted to get a few people together to really explore this question of, OK, well, when we talk about green jobs, what do we need to talk about? Because as we've seen, there isn't really a consensus on what counts as a green job. There are some definite themes that people think about immediately. We had themes around um, biodiversity and nature and around renewable energy. But as we've kind of taken that apart a little bit through those polls, it's really a, a, a much broader question. 
Uh, and, and so what we need to do is come out from today with a, a clearer frame for when we talk about green jobs, and by we, I mean anyone in, in Cornwall, it could be uh, uh, the Employment and Skills Board at the Local Enterprise Partnership, the, the council, it could be businesses, it could be colleges and schools and universities. What do we need to be talking about? What do we need to keep in mind when we talk about green jobs to make sure we're capturing everything that we need to capture? Um, so that will be covered in the, uh, in the breakout rooms when we talk about environmental impact, education and skills, equity and access. Uh, but this is really one of the key things that we want to, uh, we want to take away. Um, so we'll be capturing comments, we've got the polls, we've got the chat box, we've got some, uh, uh, we'll be using Jamboards during the breakout sessions, we'll capture everything that's said, and then we'll put that into a, uh, into a, 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 a summarised report of everything we've come away from today in terms of how do we frame what green jobs are. So next up, I want to move on um, uh, to our, uh, our, our, um, our um, small group of experts who are going to give us a bit of a, um, a context setting uh, around what do we need to think about when we're talking about green jobs. We've got some, some really uh, excellent speakers. Uh, we're going to hear um, about five minutes from each. Um, uh, first up, we're going to <coughs> hear from Dennis Fernando, who's the climate change campaigner at Friends of the Earth uh, and coordinator of their Green Jobs Report. So uh, I'll hand over to Dennis uh, and then I'll introduce our second speaker. Nice to see you, Dennis. Thanks very much and great um, intro. I'm really pleased to be here at this event. Um, I'm just going to share my PowerPoint, so someone please shout if you cannot see it, but hopefully you will be able to. Um, I'm just going to start by talking about the Green Jobs report entitled the Emergency Plan on Green Jobs for Young People that we did for um, uh, Friends of the Earth in uh, conjunction with uh, the People's Postcode Lottery, Teach the Future, National Union of Students and uh, SOS, which is the Student Sustainability Wing. So we're really pleased to have those youth and student partners on board with this. Um, and we started, our starting point was to look at the um, unemployment crisis that is hitting young people at the moment. So half a million young people aged between 16 to 24 were unemployed at the time of writing the report. And there is much speculation about how now that furlough has ended, this could go up to a million. Um, and young people were one of the groups hardest hit by the economic crisis as a result of the pa pandemic, partly because they were more likely to work in hospitality and retail, which was hit disproportionately. The report looked at the concept of wage scarring. So um, young people in the next 20 years for merely one year's unemployment could lose up to 133,000 pounds in lost earnings um, as a result of lack of opportunities and various other um, factors which come about as a result of unemployment. Um, and collectively over the whole of the country, if we looked at that in terms of every single young person being unemployed over the same period, we could lose up to 39 billion pounds and um, that's 105 million pounds per um, local authority that could um, lose um, money if you collected the cohort of young people in each one and here is the the figures um uh for cornwall so um up to well over 303 million pounds 100 million pounds sorry um in economic scarring for one year's uh, unemployment um over the next 20 years and um, uh, over 63,000 pounds is the average for um, one uh, for, for a young person uh, for one year's unemployment over the next 20 years. Um, don't worry about all the figures, they're all in the report, which we will post a link to in the chat box. Just wanted to say a little bit about anxiety. Bath University and Avars did a very far reaching survey and it found that the young think that people have in the main failed to care for the planet, future is frightening, governments are failing young people and governments, only a minority think that governments can be trusted. Um, really interesting to hear what people think about what a green job is. Friends of the Earth is defining it very broadly and saying a green job is a job that helps to reduce climate wrecking carbon emissions, restores nature, or helps achieve a safe and healthy environment. So all those things that were said in the jam board are green jobs, but also um, jobs that are not traditionally thought of being green jobs. So teaching, um, social care, um, uh, platform starts because we want to get people off aviation and onto trains, those kind of things, bicycle repair, these are also 
green jobs by our definition. We want the agenda to be one that is there for everybody. And that is big so that we can tackle the youth unemployment crisis at the moment, but also make a contribution to tackling the climate crisis. And one of the important things is the co-benefits. It's not only the young person or the person who gets employed in the green industry that benefits uh, everybody. You can see there up to £34 billion pounds, um, in savings to the NHS, 41,000 life years saved um, in Waltham Forest as a result of the Mini Holland scheme, and uh, £377 million pounds if this sort of scheme is replicated across uh, cycling cities. Domestic retrofitting you're going to hear a lot about because of the rising energy bills, so lower heating bills at a time of rising energy prices, and we could save 3,200 deaths from uh, by warming homes and that obviously has an impact on the NHS. Uh, other um, uh, green job benefits are flood defences, new social housing construction, plastic recycling infrastructure and accelerated for, for fibre broadband. So Friends of the Earth is calling for a quarter of a million green apprenticeships over the next five years, funding green infrastructure for one million jobs over the next two years, a 10 year settlement for further education um, for um, uh, to become centres of excellence. And we want the green force to, workforce to look like the 21st century workforce. So we have to overcome the barriers that face BAME, women and disabled people. And we want to see diversity bursaries to enable that. We also want jobs that are well paid, unionized and are good jobs. And we want everyone to have access to that. And um, this was just a quote from the uh, UN General Secretary, uh, Secretary General, sorry, uh, following the code read by the IPCC report. And I just want to draw people to the, the bit where um, he says that we need government, business and civil society uniting. Uh, government have the money, uh, uh, government have the power, sorry, business have the money, civil society are as important as these two. So you don't often hear about us in a crisis, but civil society is everybody on this call and we're as important as the people with the power and the money in this uh, green agenda. Um, and just to say a little bit about what's happening at the moment, um, government is moving in the uh, has put forward this very important um, aim of 78% uh, reduction in carbon emissions by 2035. However, we're seeing a reduction in um, the amount of people employed over 2014 to 2019, 30,000 uh, less jobs uh, and less green businesses. So a lot of work still to do um, on reaching that um, that goal. And it, the importance of local government cannot be underestimated. So a retrofitting task force was set up by Andy Burnham. Uh, um, looking at um, uh, social uh, housing and uh, involving, again, if you look co colleges, social landlords and the private sector. So the importance of education, young people right at the inception of a lot of these jobs. And I just wanted to end with this, which is a statement from one of the people who took the um, survey. I don't want, sorry, it should say Bath, not Bath Spa, apologies for that. Um, but just to say, it says, I want, I don't want to die, but I want to live in a world that doesn't care I don't want to live in a world that doesn't care for children and animals. And that's just to say, that's the workforce of tomorrow. Those are the voters of tomorrow. That's the way they feel right now. So history is with these people and it's our job to try and make all of that um, a reality and to push this uh, agenda forwards. And just to say, if you do get into the report, what I'd say is go straight to the executive summary, which is a couple of A4 pages, look at the appendix for the impact on, on young people in your uh, uh, local area. And then if you, if you like what you're seeing, uh, read backwards through the report. Uh, and there's my Twitter handle in case you want to ask any more uh, questions, please feel free to direct message me. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, a really compelling argument and vision there for not just the benefit of green jobs, but the uh, the potential impact of, of unemployment um, from an economic perspective. And, and there's some really uh, interesting comments in the chat as well about uh, other other ways young people could be disproportionately affected. Um, really good, important point from Carrie around, uh, around mental health. So please do put a link to the report in the chat uh, and we'll, we'll put it in the follow-up email as well for people to have a look through, but that sounds like really useful reading. Um, next up, I want to come to Gareth Lowe, who is the uh, regional officer leading on the environment in the Southwest for Unite the Union. Uh, so Gareth, I will hand over to you. Thanks very much, Peter. Um, can everybody hear me okay? 
Yeah, great. And a um, pleasure to follow Dennis as well. And I will definitely be um, checking out that report. because That was a fantastic presentation. And even as Dennis was presenting that I was tweaking mine, because I think there's a few things here that um, I will be duplication otherwise. So I haven't got a slideshow for you today, guys, and I have just got five minutes of time. So what I'm going to do with those five minutes is I'm going to skip the need to act. Um, I'm going to take it as given that people have attended this meeting, understand why this is a crisis and why we need to act urgently on this malaise. Uh, if anybody wants to question me or to talk about that at length, we can do so later in the session. Uh, but before I start talking about green jobs and a just transition, I'm going to start with a story. So I was raised as a child by a conservationist and I was taught about the greenhouse effect in school. So I knew about the importance of the environment and the climate. And yet still I remained professionally inactive up until even just a couple of years ago. And I approached my employer and I asked if I could get more involved. Um, I work for Unite the Union um, and I'm now pleased to lead on this agenda in the Southwest. Um, but at the time of that conversation, there were no equivalents to my role in other regions of Unite. Now, I'm not suggesting it was a result of that conversation, uh, more the direction of travel of the union movement in general. But I'm now pleased to see that there's an equivalent lead officer in each region. If we're going to tackle the developing crisis decisively, then there are three pillars in which we need to affect change. Our personal lives, our work, and in wider society. Hopefully, everybody in this meeting already knows how to make changes in their personal lives. And whilst it can take a while, we can also make changes in society via democratic means, such as casting our vote at the ballot box. Of course, that can be quite slow. And we might also look to local initiatives and local community initiatives to make change socially. Um, but making positive changes in the world of work is just as important um, and for many people that remains out of, reach, out of reach. It's a crucial area because workplaces often contribute significantly to our carbon footprint. Without tackling and greening employment all of those other efforts in our social lives and our personal lives could be in vain. So let's be honest, Unite and the trade union movement have not always been at the forefront of this initiative but I'd like to say we're now leading the charge. So here at Unite, we've assembled a national task force to tackle the climate crisis head on. Uh, that task force will ensure that the new normal puts climate front and center of concerns alongside job creation, reskilling and support. Um, I could talk a lot about different um, specific initiatives. I'll focus quickly on some green job manufacturing initiatives, um, which we've been lobbying for in Unite. Um, seven shovel ready job creating programmes that could give the best, quickest and greenest return on direct government intervention and investment in the economy. I'm talking about housing retrofits. I'm talking about carbon capture use and storage. I'm talking about automotive and green shipping, gigafactories, aircraft replacement schemes, renewable energy from solar, wind and tidal, plus a large scale broadband rollout. All of these initiatives are not only green jobs, but they're also green jobs with the right political will will pay for themselves in just the medium term. And I'll give you an example there, the housing retrofit. It's reckoned for every one million pounds that is spent on the housing retrofit, 1.7 million will be generated back into our economy, including crucially as wages. Uh, another example, uh, without carbon capture use and storage, uh, experts believe the cost of the UK meeting its emissions targets jumps by 138%. Uh, and I'll post links to these manufacturing initiatives in the chat after this presentation. Um, we also see automation changing the playing field. You know, new roles require new skills. Somebody needs to build robots and AI. We require proper investment to upskill workers and address the country's acknowledged existing skills deficit. Make no bones about it, transforming industry in itself is a job that will require hundreds of thousands of workers' input. However, we don't all have the luxury of working on the cusp of innovative green industry. Uh, retraining here is really key, and to me, a just transition means that no workers are left behind. We all know Cornwall's job mix it includes farming, it includes tourism, a bit like my hometown of Glastonbury, a tourist town in a rural area. And my message here, and responding to those questions that Peter was asking in those initial slides as to what is a green job, is simply this. All jobs and industries can be greened. Now, that might mean something very different if you're working in a florist to if you're working in nuclear. An industry that, by the way, Unite believes, in the short term at least, is part of the solution. Because we need to end our um, reliance on dirty fossil fuels now. Uh, and there is no scientific model that does that without involving nuclear in the short and medium term. 
But businesses from the smallest to the largest can all look to green um, different parts of their model. And one area I'd encourage everybody in this to look at is their supply chain. So in a, supply chain, sorry, <laughs> in an age of consequences, we need to look locally to green our supply chains. And the environmental impact of business procurement needs to sit at least alongside cost in any decision making process. So what are we doing practically at Unite, as well as forming task forces and passing motions? Well, we're also involved with the COP26 coalition, organising to build power for system change and climate justice. And hopefully you saw some of that um, off from the Global Day of Action that took place just a couple of weeks ago, Saturday the 6th of November, where mobilisations, demonstrations and marches were coordinated, not just across the country, but also across the globe. Those looking to make changes at work do far worse than to organise and unionise their workplaces, whether by workplace reps, health and safety reps, or whether you actually have dedicated green reps. This allows workers to have a say, ask questions and work in partnership with their businesses on the agenda. So we're doing that here in Unite in the Southwest, working with businesses and institutions, and we're now on the verge of signing more than one uh, fairly historic environmental agreement that ensures workers' rights are heard as companies engage with this green agenda. We need workers to have a seat at the table on those sustainability boards, not just in an observer capacity, but in a full voting capacity to ensure that what we see is real radical change and not just greenwashing. So I'll leave it there. I'll end by saying, write to your MP, urge them to support the cross-party climate and ecological emergency bill, join the COP26 coalition, and like myself, don't be afraid to go and start that conversation with your employer. You never know where it might lead you. Thanks, guys. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Gareth. That was fantastic. Really great to hear uh, that idea of the just, just transition uh, coming into play. Um, and um, that idea of all jobs can be green jobs feels like a, a really interesting one and, and, and one I'm sure that will uh, will come up throughout. Um, uh, have a look in the in the chat for, for there's a, a really good question from Chloe, I think that you might be able to uh, uh, respond to there. But next up, I'm really pleased to uh, hand over to Joni Willett, Dr. Joni Willett, who is an, uh, an author, but also senior lecturer in politics with the University of Exeter and co-director of the Institute of Cornish Studies. So, Joni, over to you. Hi, well, hopefully, I didn't even start it on the right slide. There we go. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, let me know if you can't. Um, and I'm gonna go into present mode. No, I'm not gonna leave it like that because it's just easier right now. Um, okay, so green jobs, navigating the change in the community. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit of a story. Okay, and the story starts um, uh, with some research that I was doing for my book. Thank you for mentioning it, Peter. Um, uh, and I was, I was doing um, some research in Cornwall and also in the Southwest of Virginia in the United States. And one of the things that's interesting about both regions, apart from the fact that I'm from Cornwall, Cornwall matters an awful lot to me. But also, um, but also South of Virginia, I had no, I've never, I'd never been to before. Um, but one of the things that really interested me is, is about the way that both of them, their economies have changed really, really rapidly over the past couple of years. You know, within the last two decades, really, um, the economies have changed really rapidly. Um, so uh, Southwest Virginia, I've got some, uh, an old cotton sew factory or an old clothing factory here, but there was a, a really, really large manufacturing um, sector um, and the various different kinds of manufacturing they were doing have now gone. Um, uh, or or I, sh I should say changed because gone is not the right word. Um, uh, and also coal mining was uh, really dominated the area as well. And uh, obviously that's uh, definitely not a green job. Um, okay, but one of the things that was fascinating me about Cornwall is that whenever you'd have a conversation, you'd have a conversation with you in the, you know, just out on the street or whether it was part of a research environment, and people would say, yeah, well, the problem with the Cornish economy is that fishing's gone, farming's gone, mining's gone, all we got left is tourism. And it was really, really fascinating. And then I'd do this kind of presentation to um, people who actually work in the Cornish economy, and they're like, that's so outdated, they're so wrong, and it's like, well, no, this is what people believe. It might be inaccurate, but it's what people believe. And the point, the thing that I'm taking from that is, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, in just a minute, is about how difficult it is for people to be able to navigate the local labour market. And um, the research that I was doing in Cornwall, the fieldwork for it was about two years ago now. Um, and uh, you'd ask people about the Cornish economy, and they would tell you about they'd tell you about the things that there weren't anymore. So we've got a picture here of the, of the China clay area um, and uh, people would tell me about how, you know, they used to work in the clay area, in the, in the, in the clay industry, 
Um, but now, you know, uh, they either had to take early retirement or, um, you know, all the kind of engineering jobs that they had, just they just don't exist anymore in Cornwall, or at least you can't find them. Um, so we're getting this, we're getting this really strong sense that people used to know what kind of jobs were happening, but now they had no idea. And so now when you said, what's the lab local labor market, they go, tourism. And it was only when you started to dig a little bit deeper that you'd start to realize that there were these little seeds when people would go, oh yeah, um, isn't there stuff to do with digital tech happening? Or um, I don't know, isn't there like a maritime industry or something? But the first kind of response was that people were like, oh, it's this old stuff that's gone now and we're really not happy about it. And the thing that was really interesting was that even when people did know um, about the kind of new jobs that there are in the Cornish economy, they'd say things like, so this is, this is one quote from, um, from the book. So I know that, you know, there's this, this sort of geothermal hub, um, there are opportunities around Cornwall for people to get into high tech careers and all of those things don't realistically um, know how many. I feel a bit lost with it, really. I sort of hear about these things, but it doesn't feel like they're targeted at me. The point that I'm trying to make here is that even when people do know about the different, the, the new, newer sectors in the Cornish economy, um, they didn't feel that they were able to, um, they didn't, didn't feel that they were able to participate in it. They didn't know how to, they didn't know, the, they literally did not know the routes to, like where to look for those kind of jobs. What kind of skills are required for those newer kinds of jobs and how to go about getting those skills. There's just so many, so many broken connections that meant that people felt really lost um, and then really quite resentful because the new jobs became jobs for other people rather than jobs for people like them. Um, and so then they ended up becoming feeling more and more alienated from the whole situation as well, which of course is really bad for new jobs more generally. Um, I need to get a move on because um, I'm probably running over time. The, the other thing that I really wanted to talk about is the problem of people physically getting to the job opportunities that are available. So, um, so we're hearing time and time again in Cornwall, and it's a little bit shocking to me actually. People were people were telling me about the difficulties of public transport or the lack of public transport. And this quote here is from somebody who works in careers, talking about how I was at a careers fair, talking about apprenticeships within five and within five miles, there were only of a, of a particular town, there were only two apprenticeships. And I mean, it does change day to day, but on that day there were only two within a five mile radius. I think. Within 25, 20 miles, there are about 38. So it raises the question, if you're a young person that can't travel 20 miles because they haven't got a moped or a driving license, can't afford a car, and you know we all know about public transport in Cornwall, they're limited to looking at two apprenticeships or probably getting a job in the local factory or wherever. So this is another massive barrier for towards green jobs, in, you know, or towards the talent pipeline um, uh, of bringing in young people. Um, and the final thing is a ray of hope. Um, I see that Carrie's on the call, Carrie from the um, Cornwall and Arles and Silly Careers Hub. And the, um, uh, but we've uh, been, uh, just, we're just starting on a project. We've just recruited our research assistant, actually, um, uh, with the uh, Cornwall Education and Learning Trust, which is a consortium of local schools. We're starting on a project about connecting primary age children with local businesses to help them to see some of the opportunities, sectors and skills that there are in the local labour market. So this is the idea that actually is just trying to challenge that whole thing. People don't know what there is in the local labour market. Well, let's start with primary age children um, and so that they can sort of take this kind of like emerge, these, these ideas about what kind of jobs they might be able to get locally throughout their education. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much. Thank you, Joan. That was fantastic. Really nice uh, and important to hear more about the, the gap between the theory of green jobs. We were talking about, you know, what this could mean in, in, in theory and the practice of what that actually means for people on the ground and certainly bringing in that really important Cornish context. Um, so thank you so much uh, for that. That was fantastic. Um, so we'll obviously we'll have the recording of this if anybody uh, missed any of, uh, of what those speakers said. Um, and um, please do uh, have a look at the, the comments and the, and the questions in the chat. There's some really, uh, really important ideas in there. Um, so we've heard, uh, we've had our kind of 
okay, let's a bit of provocation of do we really know what green jobs mean? What is that? Where are we with that? We've had these really useful context setting um, uh, presentations and talks um, from three uh, different perspectives. Uh, and what we're going to do now in, in just a couple of minutes is move into some breakout rooms. Uh, so this is a summit. So it's really important that we get the chance to, to hear from everybody. Um, and how this next session is going to work is we've got three different breakout rooms uh, and you're going to be invited to choose between them. Uh, so um, we're going to run these twice as well. So it'll be about half an hour um, in, in, in each with a 15 minute break in between to grab a cuppa, go to the loo, uh, move around a bit, whatever you need to do. Um, uh, uh, so then we'll come back and we'll, we'll go into a second one. So you can choose between two of the three that we're running. You can move between them at will with the breakout room function if you want to just you know dip in and out, uh, but we definitely encourage uh, picking two uh, and, and going to one and then going to the other. So um, I'll, I'll talk you through uh, the, the different rooms. So uh, room one is talking about uh, uh, equity and access. So uh, green jobs for one and all. Um, so we were going to have uh, Tarn Lam, the, the CEO of Cornwall Neighbourhoods for Change, uh, to, to lead this uh, conversation. Um, she's unfortunately unwell, but she shared her slides with me and her notes, so I'm going to talk us through that. Um, and so uh, I'll give a bit of an introduction. I'm hoping Gareth can join me in there as well. So we'll start off that conversation and then invite everyone else to join in. So thinking about, OK, what, what, how is equity and access to green jobs relevant in Cornwall? Um, in breakout room number two, we'll be looking at skills and education. So what do we need? What's available? Uh, and here we're going to be joined by uh, Stevie, who is the uh, uh, Cornwall Campus Student Union President uh, for the University of, of Exeter and Falmouth. Uh, and also uh, Tom, who's the head of skills from Truro and Penwith College. I'm um, hoping as well that uh, uh, Dennis from Friends of the Earth will be uh, in there as well to, to, to help hold that one. So again, they'll have a, a, a sort of a, a 10 minute conversation uh, just to share their perspectives and then we'll open that up to everybody else uh, and then in the third uh, third group we're going to talk about okay well what's what is the environmental impact of of green jobs uh, how do we tell when they are actually beneficial to the environment what might that mean um, and how does it affect all of the other aspects of green jobs as well uh, and so in this room uh, we're going to have a a discussion um, within Cornwall Wildlife Trust so we've got Carolyn, Pip, John and Abby from the Cornwall Wildlife Trust uh, to talk about uh, some of those issues and then again invite that up to the uh, to the wider audience in the breakout room. Um, so uh, what we're going to do in these rooms is also take some notes on Jamboard uh, and I'm just going to share my screen uh, just to, to show you how this works in case you've not used Jamboard before. So I'm going to share a link to this in the chat. We're going to have note takers taking notes in the session so if you don't want to use it absolutely don't worry about it we'll be capturing everything that's said but if you do uh, when you go to the link you can use this arrow at the top to navigate uh, in between each group so if you're if you're in round one in equity and access you go here if you're in education and skills here etc and then we'll move uh, into round two after the break so i'm just going to um pop the the link to the Jamboard uh, in the chat so you've all got that uh, to hand. Uh, but as I say, don't feel like you have to, you have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, we'll be taking we'll be taking some notes. So uh, I'll open the rooms uh, just in a second. Um, please pick the one that you want to go to first. Um, if there's lots of people in that one and you want to move to another, we're going to do Sasha is work towards. Um, OK, so uh, what do we do with this uh, and how do we take this forward? So I mentioned uh, I mentioned before that the, uh, what we're hoping to get out of this um, of this event um, is um, a, a kind of a new frame of, uh, okay, what do we need to talk about when we talk about green jobs? So reflecting back on the polls we ran at the beginning about uh, yeah, how there really is no clear shared definition of what uh, a green job is. Um, we're, not, we're not hoping to get a definition out of this because I think we've made it clear that that's quite a, that's a very difficult thing to do. But if we can get a frame in terms of what do we need to talk about when we talk about green jobs? Uh, then this gives us uh, a resource that we can bring into conversations, we can bring to uh, politicians, to teachers, to businesses, we can share, we can get more input into, um, and we can uh, keep it evolving and keep it growing. Um, 
So uh, to do that, we're going to do a few things. Um, first of all, I'm going to uh, have a look through the, the Jamboard. Um, I'm going to share my screen so we can have a look, but I also invite you to, uh, to, to have a look at the Jamboard yourself as well as we go through it quite quickly. Um, and um, I'll just um, share my screen to, to, to explain what I mean. Um, so for instance, uh, while we're talking through it and picking out key ideas, if you want to uh, make some notes, there's a pen tool which you can click on here, and then that means you can you can make little annotations on on any ones that you think are particularly important. Uh, so I'll, I'll, again, I'll share the I'll share the link to the Jamboard in the chat, uh, and if you are able to do that and, and want to do that, uh, please do, and it'll help us uh, get an idea. But I'll all, also invite people to. Um, unmute themselves uh, and share any particular points that they feel are important. So we're not going to spend too much time on going through the Jamboard because that's something that you can do in your in your own time and we don't want to just uh, repeat back everything you've just heard uh, but we'll pick up some some key points from some of the sessions and then we're going to run another shorter Mentimeter poll to, to wrap up and see where we uh, have to get to. Um, thanks so much for our uh, breakout room uh, uh, facilitators and speakers, uh, Stevie and Carolyn, I know you've got to head off. So thank you very much for, for joining and we'll, we'll make sure to share everything. Um, but um, our, there's the, the Jamboard link in the chat. So feel free to uh, head to that um, if you want. But uh, as I said, I'm gonna share my screen now. So um, what I'll, I'll just say a little bit about this round. So again, if you want to make uh, annotations as we go, uh, you can do that if you've got the Jamboard open in your in your own screen. Um, but very quickly, so in the first uh, first round of, of equity and access, we're talking about okay, how do we increase um, uh, equality of green jobs? Some of the really key things uh, we talked about were uh, information. How is the information uh, getting to people about where these green jobs are? Uh, what they mean. We talked a lot about food as well and how uh, jobs are, are uh, you know, uh, the, um, uh, being paid well enough and being able to afford food uh, and, and the information that sometimes we have to challenge around that. Uh, so some of the things we thought that need to happen that aren't happening are um, paid internships, uh, collecting stories about uh, about what is already happening um, uh, and, and local stories about people who are uh, making their jobs more green or already doing things that have an impact uh, and a really interesting comment around can we use tourism and the visitor industry to explore the platform um, of new green job opportunities for for Cornwall to share ideas about what it could look like here uh, often the, the the tourism industry uh, can be quite a controversial area when we think about equality and access so could that be um, a, a positive uh, impact in the, in the second round, um, we talked a bit about um, uh, pay, the importance of, of, of pay. You know, the green jobs need to be paid well. Uh, this is a really uh, key part of, 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 of making jobs accessible. Some really important points as well about qualifications. What are we demanding from people uh, to be able to, to have green jobs? Do you need particular qualifications? Do you, um, you, know, do you need a, a degree, a GCSE, an A-level in order to be able to get a green job? Uh, and if so, why is that? Do we need to rethink the demands we put on people uh, in order to be able to, uh, to, to access uh, green jobs? Um, so lots of other really interesting ideas there. I see some people still adding some, some, some notes, which is fantastic, and we will, we will capture all of this. Um, but um, moving on to um, uh, the uh, education and skills group, um, which was uh, Sasha, do you want to say a little bit about uh, what came out yeah. of the group? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We had a very good discussion. So ours are actually, the first round is actually our second round. Oh, no, I think you switched it around. Um, thank you. Um, really good discussion, if I'm honest. Um, I think we are cut off both times when people were making some really good points. And more or less, I think similar conversations flowed, uh, flowed between both sessions. And it was, one, the understanding and the need for a pipeline mapping, for example, to see, for example, what skills are needed for certain jobs and how do people get there. Um, um, but also the understanding that, uh, and I think one of the biggest points that I think was a really good point that Stevie basically made was essentially um, more or less in Cornwall and some places in Cornwall, young people are very aware of the, the need to be green, the need to be sustainable, the need to uh, 
you know, the the impacts that they have on the environment. So, for example, for Stevie, and I don't know if Stevie probably wants to also talk about this, talk about this himself, because it was a very good point, is he has done a green degree. He, he potentially will have a green job. But what is the the problem right now is the lack of opportunity to then use the skills um, and be desirable for employers where they don't have a lot of experience, for example. So it's more or less the touch point of people need to be opening up uh, graduate roles. They need to be having entry entry level roles for people like Stevie, for example, because then they feel defeated when they've been told that you need the certain qualification, then they get that certain qualification. And then there's a lack of opportunity in intake in having, um, for example, less or no experiences practically working in that field. And then that's what makes a lot of young people then outsource to different areas because they don't have the lack of, uh, they don't have opportunity. We also spoke about, for example, the need of, um, apprenticeships for example they need to be well paid we can't uh, exploit young people or exploit people um, which is essentially like free labor if they're not getting paid enough to then stay and live in Cornwall um, and I think it was the example that we got for example people who potentially have apprenticeships are paid so low that is the equivalent to the bus fare they could take to get to their apprentice uh, the apprenticeship. So there's a really interesting um, discussion about a lot of things, but we also talked about the need to basically change our educational system. So Tom made a very good point um, about how our education system has not been fit for purpose for a very long time. And with COVID-19, it actually made um, a little space to to reevaluate what is happening and what needs to be changed for the future. So I feel like people need to look at the educational system and then change it to make it fit for purpose for the new generation, starting at all levels of education and having that collective action, not only at primary school level, but further education and then also HE um, and then working together in terms of basically tackling that. So it was a really good discussion and I and I really did enjoy that session both times. Brilliant. Thank you, Sasha. So we've also got uh, yeah the second round as well, uh, as well uh, that, that uh, you can have a look at as well on the Jamboard. But we'll move on to the third group, uh, which was environmental impact. Uh, and, and Mike, do you want to say a little bit about what came out of uh, about these conversations? Yes, thanks. So um, I think there was a, there's a common themes that came out in both our sessions, which very much reflect what we've just heard. Um, so uh, it, we had some stories from people about how they got into working in green jobs in this case specifically with Cornwall Wildlife Trust and it seemed like you know they, they had had quite roundabout accidental ways of getting into these jobs uh, and faced you know formidable barriers that they had to overcome and, and in particular people had got um, degree uh, level qualifications that qualified them for working on you know land-based wildlife-based jobs but actually had to do countless short-term volunteering roles to get anywhere near being actually be properly employed in the sector and in some cases you know having to actually fund themselves to be able to volunteer so it's very the current system would necessarily exclude a lot of people who don't have that ability and that opportunity. So the a key need emerges is, you know, for a smoother pathway, more well-paid entry roles, clearer understanding of where uh, from an entry level you might be able to go with a career. And that, that goes, you know, right from um, people before they enter um, paid employment or apprenticeships, you're know, having an appreciation of what the, the opportunities are when they're first considering what they might study, what their future careers might be. So there's a lot of obstacles need smoothing out in the pathway there and then our, our second round we we got in into a um a, an interesting discussion because we had um at least three different perspectives on land-based industries and farming in particular and we i think we we unpicked quite a, a need to understand better what um green jobs might mean for the for the farming and food growing sector and what the kind of uh, what the needs are, what Cornwall can grow, what Cornwall should be growing, what is the um, the relative importance of carbon sequestration of wildlife flourishing on farmland and being able to produce more food, uh, helping to enhance the health of the people that eat that food, uh, helping to provide less seasonally variable, less uh, random, you know, less precarious 
jobs for people working on, on, on the land. So there's a, an awful lot there to kind of actually unpick what the best model would be for how food and farming goes forward in, in, in Cornwall. And I say, you know, we had three quite varied perspectives just from within our uh, small groups. So um, definitely some it, it, an area to, to, un to understand better. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. So um, some really uh, key themes, I think, emerging. Again, we'll share all of these notes, um, but I'm really hearing a theme around we need to broaden our understanding of what green jobs are. And there's a lot of uncertainty. There are different perspectives and it doesn't feel like a problem. This feels like a really important thing that we don't oversimplify green jobs and we don't like allow other people to oversimplify what green jobs mean, because there's still a lot we need to unpack and understand. So we're going to make sure that we capture this uh, in the uh, in the follow up report that we'll put together uh, and, and share taking all of the different perspectives we've heard from this. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much um, for, for everyone who's fed into that. So we've got a little bit of time left uh, and I'm going to in a second run another uh, Mentimeter poll to sort of uh, try and wrap up uh, what we've heard. And, and then start thinking about, okay, where do we need to get these questions? Where do we need to get these messages? Who needs to hear them? Uh, we've got a, a really nice mix of people uh, on this session today. There's a lot of people who, who wanted to join and couldn't, and there's a lot of people who probably haven't heard about the session as well, who it might be uh, beneficial for. Um, before I do that, we've, we've got a little bit of time in case anyone wants to jump in and uh, add anything. We've got some good comments in the chat um, uh, from Julie and others. But if anybody wants to add anything that, that they feel like we've missed in terms of the questions we've asked or, or, or anything that hasn't been reflected uh, before we go into the, the, the last poll, just want to create a little bit of space. Um, Ralph, if you've unmuted, do you want to share something? Yeah, just to say that in, in recent discussions, probably the last few minutes, I, I've said one or two things that was seen as quite controversial, really. But I think my, um, but only because what I'm really looking for, I think, is an overview, is, is a strategy by which we can see the opportunities um, and, and create those jobs by making the best use of, of the whole region, you know, as, as part of the whole country. And often that's what seems to be lacking. There are arguments for and against any individual initiative or way of life or potential jobs, uh, you know, and whether you're helping directly to enhance the environment uh, or perhaps indirectly through organisations that are simply improving their game. Um, but if, if there was, and maybe universities can help more, Peter, I mean, Exeter's doing a lot of fantastic work, but really if people could stand back and look at the balance that we need to achieve, I, to me, that's the underlying problem. The world is out of balance. It's not that anything is inherently evil um, or even an inherently good, usually, but if you get the balance right, and then we can know where to invest, where to put the effort in, where to create those jobs. Um, because at the moment, we still seem to be, you know, competing really for opportunities to create jobs on out of date, metrics and you know an economy that nobody understands nobody is quite clear where it's going um there should be some structure within which people could have that debate and help to balance where we try and create the jobs if that makes sense thank you Ralph. yeah really appreciate that um any other uh, any other comments um before we move on to the poll a uh, good comment in the chat from from dan well yes yeah, so, sorry if i had a moment um i was hoping that you maybe would have been a lot further down the road perhaps with the whole expansion of green jobs in Cornwall in the absence of that at the moment. I mean, just, just a simple educational qualification at secondary level to have an understand, better understanding of green issues. If you've got green degrees, um, you know, with what Catherine was saying about employment opportunities, is there not a place for a basic green qualification at, at much, much more basic primary or secondary school, secondary school level? And could you not help to to get a reality in the educational sector. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, really good point. So these are things that we we absolutely all need to uh, all need to consider and, and build in. And I think, I mean, Cornwall is uh, there is a lot already happening uh, around around green jobs. But I hope what we've you know what we've taken from this day is that there's a lot more that that can be done and needs to be done. And that that real uh, definition of what it means uh, needs to be expanded. Um, so I'm going to open up to the, uh, the, the second Mentimeter poll. Um, so it's going to be a shorter one here, but uh, I've shared the, the link in the chat. So you can either go to menti.com uh, on, your, on your phone um, and enter that code, or you can click that link uh, and access it. And once again, I will, uh, I will share 
share my screen. So the first question uh, we've got is the uh, is a repeat of a question that we had before. Um, so how clear is the definition of green jobs to you? So earlier when we ran this, we had uh, some very unclear, some not sure, um, some somewhat clear and some somewhat unclear and no very clear. So interesting to see we've already got uh, someone who feels like it's 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 very clear. It'd be interesting to hear whether that's someone who was uh, here for the poll in, in the beginning and has changed their minds uh, about what this might mean. Um, definitely a, a stronger tendency towards uh, towards clarity, um, which is really interesting um, and really uh, really positive to see. Um, uh, even though what we've really done is kind of unpack green jobs and say, well, there isn't really a definition, but uh, but that's something that we need to get a lot better at. So it's really positive to see uh, that as a uh, as a potential outcome of this. Uh, so again, I'll just give a, a, another few seconds uh, for people to uh, access the, the Mentimeter. And if you can't access it for whatever reason, please do uh, put your thoughts in the uh, in the chat, and we'll make sure we can uh, we can include those. Uh, so. Uh, still some, uh, uh, still some, uh, uh, you know, unclarity uh, around around what green jobs is. Uh, absolutely, uh, and still some people feeling not sure about it. So I think that that to me feels quite a, a positive step. Uh, I'm going to move us on now to the second question, which is, okay, so going forward, this conversation about green jobs isn't stopping here. It, you know, it's already been going on, and it will continue. What should be the priorities for how we talk about green jobs? So what are the key things? And I think I've only given you uh, the option to say three things here uh, because I'm sure we could all go on for uh, for a very long time. Um, but what are those uh, what are those priorities? We've heard a lot of different ideas uh, and we're not going to lose any of those, but we are going to have to uh, distill down uh, to some degree uh, and to and to summarize. Um, so what are the what are the things that people feel like we need to make sure uh, we we capture? Uh, so. Uh, we've got one, one answer coming in already. So we need to talk about job security, pay uh, and education. So re three really uh, key ideas. So let's see what, uh, what else comes out of the, uh, uh, of the poll. Um, okay, so some really interesting ideas here. So um, more around funding and training, the just transition, interesting. The idea of real world outcomes, uh, definitely kind of funding, training and education. Uh, there's a, a few more people have said that as well. Uh, permanence of jobs that just transition so that that kind of um, aspect of, of of equality clarity I definitely heard that in a lot of the uh, the feedback and in the in the conversations things like uh, classist undertones um, really really important opportunity for young people um, uh, and the now interesting question that, that these need, need point these need to happen now a time scale as well um, so these are some really useful, uh, really useful ideas, really useful uh, comments. Again, I'll give a, a, a minute in case anyone wants to uh, add anything else, uh, just as they keep coming in. So we won't uh, uh, we won't lose anything that's not in here, but it's really useful to you know, having had this discussion, having held this summit. Where are you now about uh, 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 what these what these priorities should be? Um, so thank you for uh, thank you for adding for those and. I see education. So I think the, the larger the word is, the more people have said it's so education and real world outcomes, funding, career training, clarity. These seems like the ones that are, uh, are quite uh, uh, common. And the last question, last question we're going to ask you uh, in this um, uh, in this poll um, is, OK, so we've got these ideas. We've collected uh, all of this feedback, uh, all of these different perspectives. Now uh, we're going to condense that into a, uh, a kind of a summary report, just a, a two pager. Um, where do we need to share that? Who needs to be seeing this? Obviously not to say that we're going to produce something that is the end of the conversation. You know, it's going to be an, an ongoing, uh, an ongoing conversation. It will need to uh, evolve. But where do we need to uh, continue this conversation? Who needs to be part of that? Um, uh, and it'd be really interesting to see, uh, see your ideas. Uh, as they come up so again. So uh, educators, yeah, really key one, definitely came up. Public industry, okay, so immediately got three different uh, perspectives, funders, excellent, um, uh, policy makers, um, ordinary regular members of the public, fantastic, um, local government, governing bodies, uh, Department for Education and Skills, uh, more, more about government grassroots activists, local government, national government, um, investor groups, 
all sorts of different ideas here, which is uh, which is really useful to see. So uh, I think there's some definitely some strong themes here around uh, kind of key decision makers, whether that's through uh, government or, or education sector. Um, also a strong uh, strong push for uh, for people, uh, the public, uh, mothers is a really uh, uh, yeah interesting uh, suggestion there as well. Also potentially parish councils, um, teachers. Um, so at all levels, I'm hearing this, but, uh, you know, it might, it might well be that the message needs to be uh, slightly different uh, at, at each point, but some really useful ideas coming through here. So thank you uh, very much for those. Um, I will, I'll stop it there. Um, and uh, you might still have access to it if you want to, uh, if you want to continue. But uh, I think that gives us a really good point at which uh, to, uh, to start wrapping up our event. Um, so again, um, I will. Um, we we do have a little bit of a, a little bit of time, as we said. We want to we want to finish up uh, uh, a bit earlier than than planned. Um, but uh, if anybody wants to add anything that that hasn't been addressed or hasn't been raised, uh, uh, now is definitely the the time before we uh, we move on to to thanking and and uh, may well ask our our panelists, Gareth, Dennis, and Joni, if if any of you want to reflect on on what you've heard and and say anything to to close, but. Before that, Holly, I see your hand up. So do you want to jump in at this point? Hi, I'm just wondering how we go forward with these conversations um, in this group, because um, I can see there's lots of appetite to, for example, connect with educators. Is there, a, a, is there something we can actually put together? You know, how, how can, has anyone um, got any tangible ideas? Because I, for example, have created an assembly all about eating for the planet and the good news that is soil carbon capture. And um, because I think it's really important right now to give our, our children some good news stories and they, um, for them to know that we are working on this and things are shifting. And, you know, we've got George Eustace, who's rewritten um, Elms. And so that's fantastic for kids to sort of grasp hold of. So. You know, how can we actually get that in into um, the classroom? How can we get that even in just as an assembly? Um, because I've been trying and it's it's really hard as a singular person. Um, and I, I'm sure there's other people in this room who might have, for example, connections or, uh, yeah, just anyone hands up. Have you got an idea? How can we push this forward? I know that there's an idea to do a green job sort of fair, um, Peter, if you're still going to have energy to do that, which it, it would be great to sort of have a place where um, our young people can sort of walk around, maybe at Princess Pavilion or at a university, um, to see all these different organisations that are doing it so that they can feel inspired. Um, but yeah, for now, you know, is there just if we, we tackle education um, or, or something else, I'm just putting it out there because we've got maybe half an hour to keep talking. And I just think we started something good. Thanks, Holly. I think, yeah, that question of how do we how do we continue is a, is a really important one. Um, and we'll definitely, as a result of this, this uh, event, um, pose some of those questions uh, and invite others to pick up the conversation uh, and help uh, do things. Uh, this doesn't have to be held within within this within this space alone. Um, uh, Joni, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'd be very keen to to hear any uh, any reflections you want to make, having heard uh, the discussions today and, and been a really uh, key part of that. Hi, um, thanks, and I'd like to sort of say a massive congratulations, to Peter, for putting together this really really interesting event. It's been it's been absolutely fascinating listening to the different perspectives. Um, and things like that. Um, uh, something that we've not really talked about hugely that I think kind of needs to be in there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff around sort of um, education and young people and things like that. Um, but I think also thinking about people who want to retrain um, uh, and making sure that these that um, green jobs are really are visible to them, that what kinds of opportunities. I mean, I know there's been a lot of discussion post COVID about um, you know, people who spent some time on furlough or just some time re-evaluating their working relationships and stuff like that. Um, I know some sectors are finding that people are kind of leaving quite merrily too because, because of these re-evaluating work choices. Um, and it feels that there's a real space of opportunity there to, um, to uh, talk you know, for people who are thinking about 
um, about what else they might do um, to think about green jobs. And I think that's something else that needs to be, that would have to be connected up really with the training providers. It'd be really interesting to hear something from her own Penworth College. I know that we've had some on, some people from there on the call about um, how, you know, about the ways that people are able to to find out stuff and my internet is about to go so i'm going to have to leave it there i might put some more stuff in the chat brilliant thanks jody i uh, really appreciate that um uh, so um does anybody else um, um gareth um uh, dennis but also abby and john um from your from your conversation as, as um, discussion leaders as well whether there's anything you want to add before we uh, before we close up the the session uh, dennis over to you yeah, just wanted to echo what Joni said, um, kind of congratulations to all the organisers on putting together such a great event and having such um, great discussions. I, I just really wanted to touch on two things, one which is kind of a macro principle that I think we all need to have in our heads, which is, it sounds a bit cynical and a bit opportunistic, but it's certainly not meant to be, with crisis comes opportunity. And um, I think that it's a really important thing for us to understand that we are facing the climate crisis, but let's let's take some harp from the way that the COVID crisis was responded to. And of course there were loads of problems with the way it was responded to, and I'm not meaning to belittle, belittle those, but the principle was one that in a global crisis, you need state investment. If you think of the amount of money that has been investigated, invested in vaccines and the way that governments have turned around it, we need now to reframe that yes, you can you can in the short term, whilst just in situ with a pandemic, you can turn around it in 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 the ways that have been done. I think more needs to be done, but the, um, in the ways that have been done. But the climate crisis is nothing like that. It is one of these things that is slowly unfolding, folding, and hits a runaway point. And by the time you're in the midst of the runaway, you can't go back. And so we've really got this opportunity right now to say we must have the principles of state investment in the green jobs event agenda in keeping to 1.5 now before we get to runaway and runaway is coming unless we we solve it now so i think that that then can cascade down to some of the more immediate questions of how do you get green jobs in in cornwall because you get the ear of of, of powerful players of stakeholders that need to be around the table and i just really want to point to things like the retrofit task force in manchester and my my conception would be to get to as close to that as you possibly can. So if you can get local government, business, education, civil society, all sat around the same table talking about how do we put in some day in, day, in, day out effort, investment, our, all our relative bits into making sure that we build that pipeline, then that, that can start to move. But if you can't get to that, so if, say for example, you can't get a local government uh, player or you can't get business in the room or, or whatever it is, you get together who you can, and you make the case very strongly and you start to uh, affect an impact on the body politic and and have those as as people you want to get to the table so that just in terms of some some real practical stuff that you can think about in terms of looking at examples that have done been done in other places and are being done at the moment in terms of what the, what some of those next steps could be i think this is a really really great coalescing of people and don't underestimate how powerful and important you all are Thank you, Des. That's fantastically inspiring words. Gareth, I see your hand up in response. I just love speaking after Dennis because his optimism is inspiring. Um, so I just wanted to come in um, and say, look, thank you guys for having me today. Um, what um, I think Alex was making the point when we were kicked out of the uh, breakout room for the second time, that we have on this call a phenomenal wealth of different influences um, from, you know, um, people who are just genuinely interested in finding out more to people who are pulling strings. Um, so we have got a body of people right here in this room that can do what Dennis is talking about and start outreaching to those local enterprise partnerships, to local businesses, to, um, to policy makers, um, and trying to affect change as best we can. Uh, to Holly's point, I think a green jobs fair is a fantastic idea. Um, I'll reiterate um, the reason I came to speak to you today is to remind you that we're not all going to work in cusp green industry, although I hope many of us do. Um, we are going to need to green all jobs and all industries. So I'd love to have a stall there from Unite's perspective, not just talking about how you can get into a new green job, but how you can turn your existing job into a greener one. So if you'd like to have us at that fair, if that does get um, 
does get organised, then please, please do have us come down. I'd love to talk more about that agenda, but I think we're now short of time. So yeah, I'll just say thank you. And what an inspiring event this is. Um, we haven't touched on the need to act because there is no need within this group people to touch on the need to act, although Dennis did highlight some of that in his slideshow. Um, but let's do what we can in our personal lives, let's do what we can in our communities, and let's do what we can to green our existing workplaces and transition into new jobs as best we can. We haven't got everybody playing together and pushing in the same direction but those of us who are need to start we need to start now excellent words thank you gareth um mike do you want to uh, jump in there thanks very much yeah i mean it's been um a very rich experience this morning um you know it's been a uh, a pleasure and a privilege to work with you, Peter, but I think, you know, we work together in the spirit of let's push this thing out there and see where it goes. And uh, all I wanted to say in conclusion really was that, um, you know, this has been only one of um, half a dozen, I think actually more than that, eight uh, Green Jobs Summits events that we've had around England and Northern Ireland. Um, and um, in Friends of the Earth, you know, we, we think this is a really exciting, fruitful piece of work that we want to stay with. So we're not quite sure where where the journey goes for, from here on, but but we definitely want to be part of it. So um, I think, you know, we, we'll do what we can um, and, um, you know, to, to continue this as a, as a live conversation and, and make sure that um, yeah, all, all, all that we have uncovered today has some impact and makes those changes that we want to see. Um, and um, we've got everybody who booked on um, Eventbrite, we've got your email, so we will keep you all in touch. I'm not sure, you know, Peter's mentioned that we will do a, a short report of the event and we will push that out much more widely, but let's, you know, let, 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 let's stay in touch and um, hope some you know, more practical initiatives come out of the conversations we've had this morning. Fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Um, I think you, you raised a really interesting thing we hadn't mentioned before of how this is part of a series of Green Jobs, green jobs Summits that Friends of the Earth are, are running. Um, Sasha, as someone who's been to um, uh, potentially all of them, um, uh, I wonder if, if there's anything you want to reflect on of you know, some common themes or, or, or anything that's been particularly interesting about this one. I appreciate it. I haven't prepared you for this question, so I hope that's OK to throw at you. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. Um, I think in general, from all the summits that we've had, so um, if some of you weren't in our session on education and skills, um, I mentioned that we've had, this is the seventh Green Job Summit, and we're going to have a couple more later on this month. Um, but more or less, what has come out on a lot of them is this need of collection active, uh, collective action. So for example, everyone working together in you know, moving to this goal, because a lot of the time, a lot of people, we all know what needs to be done, but it's been done in silos rather than, you know, as one big group together. Um, there's also need of funding. So, you know, conversations can only go so far when we don't have policy or funding to back those conversations. Um, so that was one of the, the main things, but also education. And I think education is a huge standing point because um, like we spoke about even in our in our section, education is something that should be so flexible because, you know, there's that saying where, you know, no matter your age, we're always learning throughout our life. And if that is true, education also needs to basically change to fit those different purposes and different roles in people's lives. So those are more or less the, the things that came up in the other summits. What's come up more or less in this one, I feel like it's really got that conversation going, especially talking and hearing what Stevie's experiences were in terms of we need opportunity for young people who already have these degrees, these jobs, because, you know, if 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 we're focusing solely on, for example, changing the education system, but we're not also offering opportunities, then a lot of these people are going to be falling through the cracks and then they will lose the, the motivation and become, you know, admit defeat and then move out of places like Cornwall because they don't have any opportunities. So I think that's more or less what I've got from this summit uh, in particular is that, yes, we also need to change the educational system and that I think everyone is to that understanding and everyone is back that but at the same time while we have this pipeline we also need to look at the the students and the people who are already at the end of this journey more or less 
and give them the opportunity to gain those experiences and those skills needed to then work in that green sector, that green economy. Um, and I really liked uh, what Gareth was saying about, you know, all jobs technically can, you know, change and be flexible in terms of green jobs. Um, so, yeah, I was had a really good time this this time. Definitely enjoyed our conversations. Wonderful. Thanks, Sasha. It's a really nice overview. Um, so we're moving towards the very end of the of the event. Um, so I think it remains to say a little bit more about how you can stay in touch with these conversations. Holly, you've just put a, a note in the chat um, and I thought I'd invite you to say a little bit about um, the Cornwall Climate Action Network and how people can uh, find out more and stay in touch with that project. Okay, well, yeah, um, we're basically um, a group of lots of different little groups. Um, I haven't been holding it together very well because, you know, this is something that I'm doing in my spare time, like many of us do. And um, so, yeah, Cornwall Climate Action Network's just a Facebook page, but it's also linked with around 55 other smaller groups. And we send out a irregular newsletter, but we're getting more organized, getting a CIC put together in order to create a vehicle that small groups that haven't been constituted constituted can get funding and potentially for us to get some funding so that we can get some people on the ground doing that um, joined up approach to address our education department to do the small little um, repair cafes and libraries of things to um, you know better work together so that we're not repeating the same old uh, learning and we're on the ground um, talking to our neighbours about stuff that we really know about, like insulation, for example, and opportunities um, to, to sort of save energy, et cetera. So, um, yeah, cornwallcancan at gmail.com basically reaches me. The Facebook page, Cornwall Climate Action Network, is there to promote to ask questions to learn from um and there's files on there that might be of interest um as well but uh generally we're we're growing and we're asking for help uh for people who've got time to you know help us um going forward thanks Brilliant. and thanks peter and, and friends of the earth team thank goodness for you you know brilliant Hello. thanks for all you're doing and, and great to to hear out how we can get more more, more involved um there's a, a, another fantastic event happening next week. Joni's just put a link to it in the chat that I think will be really interesting to anyone who was uh, at this event. Joni, do you want to say a little bit more about, about what's happening? Cheers. Thanks. Um, thanks, Peter. Yes, yeah, so um, so with the Institute of Cornish Studies, we're a part of the University of Exeter and we bring together research about Cornwall um, across a whole range of different areas, but we've also got a lot of, a lot of research around Cornwall and the climate and the environment, as I'm sure you can imagine. So we're going to be bringing together um, uh, um, some academics who are going to talk about um, a couple of different areas that they think that should be priority areas in Cornwall. We've got sustainable clothing, um, biodiversity, renewable energy, heritage, and something else that completely escapes me right now, which is absolutely awful. Um, anyways, um, uh, and then we're going to invite people invite people to come together and discuss in breakout groups what you think that Cornwall's priority should be moving forward over the um, in order to. Uh, address the climate emergency um, and then um, we're going to invite present, uh, those discussions to be presented back to our policy listeners um, including Luke Pollard MP, Shadow Environment Secretary and Councillor Martin Alvey who's a cabinet member for Cornwall with um, responsibility for the environment, somebody from the National Trust, Creative Kerno and again somebody else who I've completely forgotten, that's the, the museum's partnerships. Um, so it should be it should be a really good hopefully it'll be a really good opportunity to just really sort of talk to um, uh, people who are actually actively involved in policy um, just to talk about the issues that we feel that are really important and that we need to be addressing as a matter of priority in Cornwall. So please come along. The links in the chat, um, uh, or feel free to email me about it, um, and it'd be great to have your involvement. Wonderful. Thanks, Jenny. Sounds fantastic. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, uh, Mike or Sasha, do you, do you want to say a little bit about how you can people can stay in touch with uh, Friends of the Earth in, in Cornwall and across the southwest? Yeah, that might yeah. be for Mike, I think. Yeah, I guess, well, um, I think actually probably the best thing in Cornwall is to stay in touch with us through through Holly's network, through the Cornwall Climate Action Network. We have a, 
uh, a network of um, climate action groups and Friends of the Earth local groups in Cornwall, but it's not very big. I think probably about 10 a dozen groups. Um, Holly's network, I think, covers much more of, of, of what goes on in Cornwall. And um, I want to make sure that, you know, we, we keep the links strong between ourselves and Cornwall Climate Action Network. So you know, if you're involved in this stuff in Cornwall and want to help you collaborate with us, then um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and make sure that Cornwall Climate Action Network is the way that you can you can do that. Um, but you can get in touch with me directly if you've got things that you uh, think I might be able to help them. Just put my email in the chat right now. Um, or if you're interested, if you're in an area where there isn't a group and you th think you might be interested in setting one up, then um, uh, please do get in touch. We can help you with that. Um, Otherwise, I think uh, you know, Friends of the Earth Nationalists will, will be continuing to work on the green jobs area. So uh, do keep an eye out for our national channels, our website, our Twitter feed and Facebook and so on. You can find us there. Um, but uh, it, it, w w whatever you think we might be able to collaborate on in, in, in future, do feel free to drop me a line. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Um, uh, I'll say uh, uh, briefly about the work that I'm doing at the University of Exeter. So I'm setting up a new network called the Green Futures Network, which is effectively uh, a new way to make the environmental and climate work that the university is doing more accessible to businesses, communities, local authorities across the southwest, but also nationally and internationally. We've got some really good stuff happening um, and it's not always that um, uh, that accessible, that uh, comprehensible or that relevant uh, to people who are doing stuff on the ground. So that's part of my work. I'll share a bit more about that in the follow up email we send, um, but we'll be launching that properly in the new year and it'd be great to have you uh, have you on board. Uh, last thing to say then is a really big thank you to uh, to everyone that's come along, um, especially to our three speakers, Gareth, Dennis and Joni, but also to all of our discussion leaders in the group. Um, Pip still here, Abby and John, uh, thank you so much. Uh, everyone else has had to leave. So thank you to, to you who've managed to stick it through to right to the very end. I know it's a busy time of year, um, but we've, we've collected all of the information. We've had loads of people come and go throughout the day. Uh, we've got a wealth of perspectives and ideas and we'll be bringing that all together uh, to share uh, share that that report uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks uh, over email so if you signed up on Eventbrite uh, or if you contacted us uh, as, a, as a contributor we'll have your email uh, to hand it so if you haven't make sure you get that uh, get that to us um, but yeah thank you so much to everyone for joining it's it's 12.45 uh, on the dot which is wonderful uh, and uh, yeah I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend.